How is it that a dream becomes reality? What is required to create tangibility from that which is only an idea? And by what means does a conscious vision become molded into a material existence? Persistence. Patience. Purpose. Positivity. But it all really begins with passion. And in my case, it also began with a few drawings and the support of some friends and family. Now, my vision is wielded in the hands of some of the greatest skiers on earth and has been to some of the most amazing places on the planet. Here we are in the shop. We just got the baskets in today. 50 baskets. We're ready to start assembling some poles. And, uh, get some heat going. Johnny on the spot. It's chilly in here. Trying to pull. Johnny provided his garage at the mouth of Little Cottonwood Canyon and helped develop the original panda pole from my descriptions. He helped create the first 3D drawings and source the grips and hardware. We together began refining the process involved with making bamboo ski poles. I sourced the bamboo and began designing the hemp and recycled straps with the help of my friend Megio Omega and eventually Ian Prowess and La La West. Ultimately, Johnny had to head back to his home near Chicago to help his family with their family business at a time when they needed him the most. We make our first move. Ty Robinson offers up some space at his intergalactic clean fuel vehicle shop in Sandy, Utah and he begins assisting as operations officer. Howdy there, Tan Snowman here, Ty. And today we're working on shock body mechanics. Body mechanics maximize your time in the shop and the quality of the experience. Do we want some uh, notes? Oh yeah. yeah. If you'll turn the machine on. 50 baskets turns into 200 baskets. 200 into 2,000. We call for backup. Sander Hadley, Oakley White Allen, Christian Overson answer the call. This is cool. Down here handcrafting hand poles in the Wasash. some goofy times and build a lot of poles over the next 13 months, but Ty's small shop begins to feel the pressure from the growing organism that Panda Poles is becoming. I decide to move the shop into the backyard of my summer home in South Salt Lake. 
Here, I can stay close to my newborn son and his mama, Mofo, while staying deep in the pole making action. God, give me a sign. It's only a matter of time before the shifting winds of change carry us on like a seed in the stream that we are. Although we achieved a lot at this location, we were destined to move on. My new family and I plan to spend the winter closer to the mountains and out of the valley smog. We move to Little Cottonwood Canyon and bring the shop with us. Hey Moses, what do you think of the new panda shop? What do you think of the new panda shop? Just picked up a camper, gonna turn it into a panda pole shop. The new shop is almost ready. So what's going on? Well, we've got a new panda shop. This needs a little bit of work. So we're taking out some benches, opening up this space. Ah! ah. <laughs> Eating there. It's wide open. Yep, dancing room. <laughs> dancing and some pole making. Yep. Pole dancing. house, as I affectionately came to name it, was more memorable than most and was home to not only my family and panda poles for a time, but is also home to two other panda tribe members. Owa and Tyson McDonald both hang their hats at this location. Being only 10 minutes from Snowbird, this location was ideal, but the space came with many of its own unique challenges. I've been doing all the sawing and uh, this sanding and everything out in the trailer and this is where I've been doing the gripping and strapping and all the clean processes. I just started doing the um, the branding out here as well or in here. I have been doing that in the trailer but it's just so cold outside. There's all this snow which is really nice for skiing but not so great for working in a little tin box or whatever the trailer's made out of. This is what it's been like for the last Last little bit. That's all recycled cardboard stuff that I'm trying to keep, trying to hold on to and save. Some supplies back in the corner there. Uh, tools and whatnot over here. Yeah, <laughs> pretty funny. But yeah, so this is it. <laughs> Moving up to Idaho tomorrow, though. One of the side of the ladder, which I characterized as before taxes. Before
Facts. Now this is just a gross amount before the taxes, like before this hip hop return the rap shit. The gap in between, somebody gotta intervene. I'm the letters M and C trap from Slim Cat, half of chemistry, and I got a tendency to turn words to imagery. Stand for something, you just might fall for anything. Now what I bring to the table is this though. Welcome to the new Panda Workshop here in Pocatello, Idaho. Yeah, cranking them out here. Uh, it's been a really awesome setup. Getting things finally into order. Uh, this space isn't quite finished yet, so we're having to kind of adapt with that every day. Uh, she rock going up uh, last week. Outlets just went in the other day, so we should be able to turn on power in this room uh, very shortly. Uh, the power just went on in the sanding room, so uh, we'll be able to cut sand in there, just plug right into the wall, and we'll have to run extension cords anymore. Yeah, so this will be the finish area, gripping, strapping, boiling, uh, just cleaning up, packaging, we'll be finishing up the poles in here, and then uh, shipping them out. Well. My stepfather, Mark Kreiner, lost his old shaft and all of his tools in last summer's Charlotte wildfire. He now has sacrificed two of the rooms in his new shop for Panda Poles. Now that's love. takes us, or where we take our own future, rather. It's a lot of work, and so much work, but it's totally worth it. So happy to be able to build panda poles and get them out to the world, all over the world. There's not much more important than family, and it's been a true blessing having the support of mine through all of this. I know I could not have done it on my own. India and China have nothing on us. It's <laughs> a Zen shop, it's not a sweat shop. Oh, that's right, this is a Zen shop. Okay, lovely. Wait. And Moses is the overseer, so I don't think that violates any uh, job right, right. Yeah, laws. Yeah. Head supervisor. Yeah. yeah. Calls all the shots. <laughs> Never known it so good. This is high class. This is like top tier manufacturing. We're really trying to keep it one step ahead of the game. Got to keep morphing. Got to keep shooting. You know, evolution is constant. If you aren't moving, 
you're probably sitting in front of a TV watching this. Or your computer, rather. That's alright. Thanks for tuning in.